Welcome to the Logic Pro X plugins tutorial on dynamic processing. Uh, we're going to start talking about the different type of compressors that are available in Logic. There are three types of compression plugins available in Logic. Uh, VCA, FAT, and Opto or Optical. A VCA compressors which stands for either variable or voltage controlled amplifier, uses a voltage control to change the output gain or gain reduction. These compressors are very versatile and fast, and we have three types that we will later on uh, talk a little bit more about in depth. It works on pretty much anything. Vocals, drums, bass, guitars, really depends on what kind of setting that you set up. Optical compressors work on a light source, which brightness determines how much compression you are getting. So they are usually a little slower, but very, very smooth and transparent. Work great on bass vocals and buses. And I usually use these for mastering on my uh, main output. FET compressors are very old school type of compressor that uses a transistor to vary the gain. It emulates the sound of tubes and valves more than other compressors do. It's very fast, very reliable, but it's not very transparent and it has a very specific sound. Um, it works great on drum rooms and drum buses, if, especially if used in parallel compression, and it really can make things pump. And then there's Logic's internal own self-created plugin called Platinum Digital, which is a very transparent, non-characteristic compressor. It doesn't really have a sound, but it controls levels very well, and it's completely depending on the setting that you use. So let's take a closer look at the individual seven different compressors that we have. So our Studio VCA, the red the second tab is an emulation of a Focusrite RED3. So if you want more in-depth information about the RED3, you can find a RED3 manual and pick up some of these uh, items that I will discuss here. It is a compressor and a limiter, it, and it has variable ratios, but it's not free. So there's no 1.7 or 2. 0.5 to 1. There's a 1.5 to 1, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 5 to 1, 7 to 1, and 10 to 1. The threshold range is free moving between minus 24 to 12 dB and the release time is between 0 0.1 and 4 seconds. Now the classic VCA which is our second VCA compressor is an emulation of the DBX160 as you can see in this picture here. It's also a compressor and limiter. Remember anything that has a ratio over 10 to 1 can be considered a limiter. It has full range controls of ratio and thresholds, but that's it. The attack and release times actually vary depending on the incoming signal and how much compression is applied. I also recommend to use a little bit soft distortion, which very much sounds like the original hardware. And our third one is the Vintage VCA, which is an emulation of an SSL bus. So you don't need to go and buy any other SSL plugin if you're looking for the SSL bus because this is very, very close. The uh, original ratios were 2 to 1, 4 to 1, and 20 to 1, but obviously with our plugin we have free range from 1 to 1 to 30 to 1. And some of the newer ones that you can now buy from SSL as hardware actually have seven different ratio settings. The release time is from 0 0.1 to 1.2 seconds, so not very long, but you also have an auto function on this compressor, which can really work. Threshold range, minus 20 to plus 20 dB. And this in addition also has a makeup. So if you're compressing a little too hard, this is your makeup gain. Then we get to the FET compressors. The URI 1176 has been modeled many times. You see it in Pro Tools as Bomb Factory. Um, BF76 and pretty much every plugin company that's out there that has a version of this particular plugin. The um, Studio FET is uh, also very aggressive. Like I said earlier, FET compressors have a very distinctive sound, but they're great for certain things like drum buses, parallel compression on your drums. Now, 
one bad thing about the Logic version of this is it does not support the all-in button mode. And if you look at the um, actual hardware unit, you see a 20, 12, 8, and 4 to 1 ratio. And there was a way to push all of them in at the same time, which gave you a 40 to 1. But as you can see in the ratio setting itself, it goes up to 30 to 1, so which is very, very close to the original all-in button mode. Our other one is another version of kind of the similar plugin, except it's from Yuri, and it's again the 1176 BF76 called in Bomb Factory plugins. Sounds very, very similar. Um, and again, does not support the all-in button mode. Now, our optical is actually an emulation of a very expensive uh, LA-2A. Um, very hard to find and very thought after compressor because it is so smooth. The optical mode, as I explained earlier, with the light source is a little slow, but it reacts smooth in. So the original release time of 0.6 seconds uh, or 0.5 to 5 relates all to the gain reduction amount. So the more compression you get, the longer the release will get. There is no threshold or ratio. Your peak reduction knob sets the amount of compression you're getting. I'm going to show you a few comparisons with a kick drum and a vocal on the different compressors. So here I have a kick drum. And right now I am compressing with the uh, Studio VCA compressor. Let's do a 3 to 1 ratio. I never use auto gain, by the way. Um, my makeup is off because my fader is actually low enough that I don't need it. And you can see my attack time is 10 milliseconds. I'm going to make that a little longer. And my release a little longer. I'm going to turn auto off. I'm going to try to uh, achieve about 3 to 4 dB of compression. Can see how the front tightens up a little bit. Uh, let's try the same thing, just changing to the studio fat. You can see we're getting much more compression at the same settings. It also sounds very different. So let's back up the threshold. So we get about the same amount of compression. And we can see it has a lot more pump to it. Now, this, as I said earlier, sounds better with very slight distortion because a FET compressor really simulates tubes and valves. Let's try the classic VCA. Much smoother. The SSL bus compressor. And you can see also slight distortion and harmonics make it sound a little bit more, more aggressive. And this is definitely smoother. Let's compare this again to the Studio VCA. And you see that you need much more threshold, a much lower threshold setting. Because of the automatic attack and, re and release time. Vintage VCA. Now let's get our 3 to 4 dB of compression again, compare it to the Studio VCA. So it's not much difference here, but it definitely pops a little more in the Vintage VCA. So the Studio VCA is a little smoother. And then our Vintage Fat should be a lot more like our Studio Fat, except it's not quite as ag aggressive. And it gives us a little bit more control And finally, our Vintage Opto. Very, very smooth. Needs a much more threshold because it's slow. Still gives us a nice pop, but it sounds a little bit more transparent. And with a little slight distortion, you see that each one of these compressors has its own character. Let's try this on a vocal. So let's set our ratio to 2.2. Our tech type very fast. 
I release a little longer. Giving me life, you're giving me life, you're giving me life. You're Let's check it without me compression. Life, giving me life, you're giving me life, life, giving me life. So it needs a little makeup you're gain. Giving me life, giving me life, you're giving me life, you're giving me life. You're giving me life, giving me life, you're giving me life. life Very smooth. Let's try the same thing with a Studio Fat compressor. You see immediately, it's very aggressive. Low hour threshold. You can hear that this compressor makes the audio of the vocal sound a lot more pumped. So you can hear the compression. It's not as transparent as our Studio VC. Let's try, let's try the classic VCA. You're giving me life, you're giving me life. Again, I can hear when it reaches this point of 4 to 5 dB of compression, I can hear the compressor kick in, which I could not hear in the VCA. Let's try vintage VCA. Giving me life, you're giving me life, you're giving me life, you're giving me life, giving me life. Very, very smooth. Vintage fat. Giving me life. I hear that. Right here. And then after should be the smoothest of all options. It's also a little slow for vocals. Some of the peaks are slipping through. And then platinum digital. Very smooth. Now let's try the same thing a lot more aggressive. Let's go to a 4 to 1. And let's try to achieve 7 dB of compression. Start with Platinum Digital. Definitely hear it once it goes over the 5. I have to lower my threshold a lot more to achieve that 7. So it's a lot of compression. Oops. It's still fairly smooth. Not smooth. But if you think of a rock song, you see how sonically the sound changes. Or a rap record, this might work really well. You can also hear the breath get really loud. Again, this compressor is not really meant for this usage. This is fairly smooth, almost as smooth as the Studio VCA. And this sounds a little rounder to me than the Studio Fat. And our optical. A little slow on the reaction. But fairly smooth. So these are examples to use the different compressors and how to kind of check on using them. Now let's talk a little bit more about what additional settings that we have here. We already know how side chaining works and how we can assign a side chain to this. Um, but uh, there are other settings here that can be uh, pretty powerful. One, is, uh, as I've shown earlier, is the distortion setting, um, creating slight harmonics or, or a lot of distortion or even clipping within it can be useful for some things. Um, probably not for a vocal, but it could probably be very helpful to make a kick or a snare sound a little bit more aggressive. Um, and then here's a very important knob, and that is our parallel compression. We can mix our clean signal with our compressed signal and parallel compress right within this plugin by mixing the two signals together. Now, as I said earlier, auto gain should always be off. It's really unnecessary to use any of these settings here, and, and, and often it is not advantageous 
and causes your actual channels to clip, as I can show you if I go to zero. Me life. I'm now hitting red you're over here. Me life. Give or if I go to minus 12, give me life. my level becomes you're so loud me life. Me life. that I'm now going to have to turn the mixer down, which is... Uh, which doesn't really make sense since we have still so much headroom. So off is probably the best solution. Life. And then deal with the makeup by hand. Release auto can be helpful You're for some things. I personally prefer the control life. of changing this as I need it. But some of these compressors, as I mentioned You're earlier, actually use the auto function to change the release time depending on the amount of compression. So check out which plugin you are using on which compressor type and compare it to the auto button and you will see that it can be helpful to actually use that plug.